Hello. Hi. Hi, Noelle. I can hear you and welcome everybody to Maker Monday. I am Chris Bakke. I am the Customer Engagement Manager here at NASCO Education and I am super excited to be here on so many levels. I am excited because we have a featured lesson plan, um, designs with an organic twist, and I giggle because the lesson plan got a twist when we um, sort of rebranded it. Um, I have another twist, and that is the original author, the teacher who developed it, um, is taking a break from retirement to um, spend this hour with us. And so you will meet Noelle Burns um, and hear about how she developed this lesson plan. And, um, and I'm really going to point out some really cool things about the way that she taught. She probably won't brag about it, but I will for her. And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about the product. And I'll demonstrate a little bit, you know, you all know that I am a student in progress. So um, elementary lesson plans I can do, the high school ones get scary, but um, I'll still show you at least a little bit of what we have going on. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about variation and adaptation, because this in fact was a differentiated way of doing the original lesson plan. And then we'll have questions and answers at the end. So hopefully um, you'll have a good time. I did put the lesson plan at the very beginning of the chat and I can repost it again. Um, I'll do that while Noelle is talking. Um, but first I wanna say, um, Noelle, thank you so much for being here and welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Sounds um like you, we are going to have nothing but fun. I know this. So Noel Burns was um, K through five, correct? Actually, um, no, I taught K through uh, middle school. And then um, when I finished, I was K through five at the end, but I did teach middle school for 17 years. Yes. Okay. Very, very good. And it's funny that you say that though, because I would often go into, so um, she was just down the road in a town called Watertown and I would go in to visit her and I would be like, oh my gosh, did you like partner with the middle school? And she would get giggling and she'd be like, no, those are my students art. And the art was always just so fantastic. And so I'd be like, you know, where'd you get the lesson plan? And she said, well, you know, I, I might've seen something here and there, and then I just threw some stuff together. And so often her, her stuff was um, pretty original and really exciting. And the thing that I loved about her is like, she didn't do the same thing with each class every year because that bored her. So she just would come up with new lesson plans all the time. So Noelle, this is called Designs with an Organic Twist. Tell, can you tell me how it started and, you know, like how, how'd you put it all together? Well, my background is um, I have a double major in art biology. And so no matter what I do, I'm always kind of combining mixed media. But I always start with the elements and the principles of design because I always felt that if the children could um, learn those slowly but surely through the time that their artwork would really improve. And so there is a constant, um, there's a constant, <laughs> sorry, I've got to shut that off. I apologize. Now I found sound just like the children. But anyways, I always felt that it's it, all good. It, do the, um, the elements and the principles, then it would be a really uh, strong point for their artwork. And so that's kind of, kind of you know, what, what I have done in the past to just always focus in on that. So let's say if I would teach the lines, then I would take and I would change that lesson plan into another lesson plan. Because I like you said, I didn't want to get bored. So I would constantly always change my lesson plans. I would teach value, but I would teach it in a different way. So this, this project, first of all, it deals with form, which, which is the geometric and the organic. So when you cut your paper, you will get either of those. 
And then it also deals with lines and shapes and the differentiations between those. And then uh, the mixed media, which would be the organic uh, with what they could find in nature because nature is so different from straight things. And then you've got um, what they could create. So it's a lot of combinations, several different principles, several different um, elements that they can combine. And then always constantly talking about doing their best, always, you know, reaching, reaching and making them go beyond where they think they can go. Yep. So really quick on that. One thing I want to say is if you have questions while Noel is talking and while we're going back and forth, absolutely type them in the chat. I'll do my best to get them and ask her. Um, who knows? Maybe I can answer it myself. Probably not. And um, but we would love this to be interactive. So do not hesitate to ask a question. One of the questions that I'm going to ask just from that last thing that you said is you gave already um, lots of choices. Um, and so how much choice does the student have when it comes to creating their piece? Um, and I'm going to show you just a final piece of this particular one that I got to bring it a little closer to me. So you can see that there's the organic shape. Um, and then of course the things from nature in it, and then the geometric shapes that are in there. And then there's probably a couple little twists in there too. There is a material list and the material list is on the lesson plan. And when I give Noel this next question, I'll make sure to, oh, we did post it right there. So when you click on the lesson plan, um, on the back page is the material list. Interesting thing about this is that this is a little bit of a twist on what Noelle originally um, developed for her class. And so let's talk a little bit, we'll talk right away about the variation and then we'll go back to how I, um, how I varied yours. So it's the variation of the variation. How's that for confusing? So when you originally did it, you actually didn't use um, just plain colored pencils. Uh, no, I used metallic metallic pencils at that point because I liked the effect on black paper. I wanted to use the black paper. And then I always felt that I don't like canned projects. I don't like projects where every single one looks the same. I want every student to have their own individual ideas put into their project. So they could bring in deer horns, they could bring in turkey feathers, they could bring in um, leaves and sticks off a tree. Um, they could bring in weeping willows, which you can weave in into your, so there, I want them to take a little bit of ownership a lot of times outside of class, believe it or not, I, I make them and they got really excited because they could find something at home that they would be able to bring in and incorporate into their art. So it would be significant to them. I like that a whole lot. And I do remember coming in and seeing deer horns in a student's art. And that must have been a little bit tricky in terms of how to attach and you dealt with a lot of problem solving in, and, and how did you have your students deal through all of that? Well, first they would have to choose if they were gonna make their shape geometric or organic, then they would have to decide how they were gonna incorporate their outside objects that they brought in into their piece. And then they would have to continue on um, filling in their shape, their geometric or organic shape with the different lines and shapes to make it interesting. So everything had to kind of work together. And then I've always, I always stress craftsmanship. I always stress um, individuality. I always stress um, um, good work, workmanship from beginning to end. Um, so hopefully when they get done, they're really proud of their artwork because I think if they're proud of their artwork, artwork doesn't get thrown into the garbage. 
I have yeah. so many students through the years because I always made folders at the end of the years for the kids to take all their artwork home in. And I've had kids tell me, oh, Miss Burns, we still have those folders. We still have our pieces of clay. We still have this. We still have that. And I think that's the goal because we, we want our kids to have these things and be proud of them. Part of their well, development. Yeah. And, and it's interesting too, because there was always a lot of organization. I mean, like you said, not every kid was working on the same thing or at the same stage, but everybody, it's like they learned the life skills. And, and I think that throws in, um, so social emotional learning is at the top of a lot of school districts and schools agenda. And, you know, Art teachers do it amazing in the classroom because this falls into that self-management and responsible decision-making, being able to control frustration, control the anxiety of wanting to get done and hurry and those kinds of things, but also the responsible decision-making in learning how to think something through. So one of my questions to you, since nobody else has any questions, Come on, I'm sure you do. Type away. And no question is silly. Remember that. No question. Oh, is silly. Abso absolutely. I so you just ask I, away. I don't know the answer either, but we'll 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 attempt it for sure. Absolutely. So the question that I had was, did you have like did you do little conferences ahead of time? Did you have did you want to know sort of what their plan was so that you could um, potentially derail like somebody going off the track well you know i think i think if you keep keep it simple keep the direction simple they had to choose first of all what shape they were going to do so that's a choice right there and then from there they had to pick their outside source and then they just started designing and part of the part of the goal was always to keep the shapes and the lines close together neat um, so that it fills the page. And basically, it's kind of like an exploration. I think all artists, they get, they sit down and you start going. And when you, there's a line in art, and there's a line that you, when you, once you cross that, you don't even know you're doing art because you're just, you're into it. And that's what you want for all your students. And I think once they, they see that they're, they're successful, They've crossed that line. And that's an exploration that they they have learned along the way. You know, keep keep your objectives simple, make sure they hit those those marks. And then from there, you just keep, okay, you have to, you have to kind of keep steering them. And um, always, well, you know, how can you fix this? Because this didn't quite go the way you wanted. Mm -hmm. So so here's a great question and thank you, um, Christy. Are there any famous artists or artworks that you would ex explore in connection with this particular project? You know, that's a very good question because most of the times when I would do my artworks, I would use um, an artist. And Kandinsky, you could do Kandinsky. He did lots of lines and shapes. Um, there's also uh, Paul Clay, he did shapes of things. Moreau, he did shapes of things. So you could tie in anyone talking about organic, you know, organic or geometric, and then the lines, you could tie in a lot of artists, I feel, um, depending, because these are, these are probably a little bit more toward the maybe modern end, more toward the, um, yeah. So, I think you could you could tie those in. I think there's a lot of artists. I always tried to, um, if I could, put the artist in there. Awesome. And um, the other question from Kelly was, where does the inspiration for the wide variety of patterns come from? Okay, well, then we talk about lines. We talk about lines and what a line is. We talk about the different kinds of lines. So you have to kind of, that's another thing you kind of have to instruct because that would be something they wouldn't know. And then what, what 
what entails a shape? A line is not a shape. Why? Because a shape is enclosed. And so there's your next, there's your next element. So you have line mm -hmm. first, then you go into shape and you go into form. And so the, the, the shapes then can be done with simple stencils, which help them, you know, to use and they can combine the stencils to make different line patterns. Um, they can color in some of the shapes, which make it a nice solid form, which on the sample, they can see that. So, um, so right there, you, you, you've dealt with line, shape, form, and you're working with color. So right there, you've hit four of the elements. And then you're gonna talk about balancing your, your artistic, which goes to the part of your, um, your principles. So when you have your, your elements are your tools. It's like a plumber. plumber. Plumber needs a tool when he wants to fix a sink, right? Well, if you wanna fix your artwork, you have to know what your tools are. And your tools are your elements. And those are the things that make your artwork better. So when something's not working, it's usually something that you're missing in your tools, in your toolbox. So, and then with, with a, you know, you, your, your, your artwork will have balance and rhythm and value depending on how you use your tools. So there's a lot of things that will, will carry through for the principles once you have the elements in there. So. I should have called you before I started working on this because honestly, this was not easy for me. So um, I'm gonna take just a few minutes to talk a little bit about um, the process and the materials and Noel, absolutely feel free to interject as well. Um, just in the finished piece of artwork, uh, it was interesting because when I saw Noel's students art, they didn't have such large boxes. They, they really did small lines all the way through. And you can tell that there was hours and hours and hours spent on their work. And so um, I think I, I, I think I, I was going to say I cheated, but you know, there's no cheating in art. Right. But I feel like I cheated because there's times where I colored things in, in the background, but I also found myself doing a lot of mark making. So really using line, um, to fill in the shape. I also was without, and I think I forgot to bring it again today. I was out, there's another, so there's templates that are suggested with the it's lesson template. plan. Yep. They love templates. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I remember you used to have oodles of them. And so there was, there's another template that is suggested that has a whole bunch of smaller um, circles and triangles <laughs> and things like that. And I kept forgetting it. And so I would find myself doing a larger shape and then doing marks inside of that. The, um, the organic piece too, that um, when you talk about bringing in something from nature, honestly, I live in just a city neighborhood. I don't, you know, I'm not by any woods or anything like that. So just some sticks and twigs and the leaves actually turned out way better than I thought that they would. And so I wonder, that was one of the questions that I had for you, Noel, is did, was there any students that got stressed out about like, I don't have anything? Well, I'm sure there's always someone that's going to panic. That's just typical. But um, I would um, have a, a, a bag. I always encourage them to bring something because then they have a little bit of ownership. But if they didn't, I would provide, you know, I could, we could say, let's take a walk. We could go and look for sticks. Anybody could pick up a stick with leaves at the end, you know, depending on when you do it, anyone can. So I could have some things in the classroom for those that couldn't, but really nature's everywhere. Pine, I mean, pine, cone, pine cone, it's everywhere. Even walking to school, they can find some of the stuff. And one thing I think I have not mentioned, which I thought we should probably mention too, is that being with the background, 
another element is space. And we haven't talked about because what they are creating is positive space, but what's in the background is the negative space. So with that, that also creates the design. So not only yes. are they creating the lines that are creating the design, but what they're not filling in is creating the design. Like a shadow, you know, shadows yeah. are, are, so very important, the shadows as long, you know, same as the lines and the, and the space and the positive and negative parts, yep. See, I told you I should have called you. And I will say on the, the black with the metallic, that mm -hmm. space, pops a little bit more, but what I, what I did think was cool, and I'm going to be super transparent here. The truth of me switching this up all had to do with NASCO's um, colored pencils. And, that's and okay. so NASCO recently um, came up with and branded colored pencils for two reasons. One is, you know, it's, lovely to have your name on a product, but also too, we wanted a product that would be um, inexpensive for teachers, you know, and these are $2 and 15 cents. I always have to look because I don't ever remember numbers, but we also wanted the quality of the colored pencils to be good. And I think as a student, you know what I mean? I, I probably can go middle school level, but I think they're really good. And Angie Zabo, high school art teacher here in Fort Atkinson, just recently recorded um, a whole bunch of really short videos using the colored pencils. And it's one of those cases where when you know all of the true art techniques, you can take a product that is a decent quality product and make it shine. And that is exactly what she does. So it really inspired me to know that our colored pencils can make really beautiful artwork. Um, I knew that I liked the color and all that kind of stuff, but I, I still need to probably take Art 101 to get a little bit more of those techniques. And so she really helped. So that was part of it. So the other part was like, okay, this isn't gonna look that great on the black. Um, but then I chose, um, Pecan's craft paper, um, because, and you know, this is what it is. It's brown paper. And the truth of the matter is you could also use recycled like grocery bags, things like that too. I, I really, you know, especially in designs with an organic twist, it's kind of a cool thing to maybe think of how else you could bring in, um, you know, something that needs to be recycled or something. I love how you can take lesson plans like this. And I think this is what happened to you often where you took a lesson plan, but then you just springboarded off of it and said, you know, I like what I saw at a workshop or I saw this piece of art, but if I did this, 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 and this, it changes the whole lesson plan, but it, then it turns it into something super dynamic and cool. And so that's why I chose the craft paper and then built off it from there. And then when I did the um, final piece of work, instead of putting it on mat board, you know, I just put it on a piece of cardboard because and again, it. yeah, and again, it's <laughs> so Say that one more time. You broke up I a said, little bit. Oh, sorry. The nature part's free. So not only yeah. do you have that at a bargain basement, the nature part's free. They can pick right. that up walking from the yeah. school or backyard. And, yes. And um, thank you, um, Stacy. It is great for a lean, the lean budget years because we do come into those situations it's also something to think about in terms of if you end up with that student who has to teach, who has to learn virtually, or if you end up going virtual again, that you can say, hey, you know, some, um, you know, a grocery bag, some, even if you did it with like pens and things like that, you can switch things up to make it work. But the, um, the actual, the actual materials are pretty pretty easy in terms of it's the craft paper 
the colored pencils, the templates, um, a ruler helps. And, um, you know, you have the students bring the nature and then the, um, the mat board or cardboard. I do want to um, just demonstrate a little tiny bit on the colored pencils just because I think they, I think they just do really well in terms of their color. And I'm hoping that you can see the yellow there. I do think that white, um, I'm gonna go to a template here. I think that white is cool because it really shows up on the craft paper. <laughs> yeah. Chris's mouth can't talk while she's drawing apparently. I don't know how you guys do it for eight hours a day, my goodness. But the white really pops. And so sure I, really liked, I really liked that look too. Um, but these colored pencils, um, I think do a really nice job. I'm not very, I'm not an, very good at drawing, um, but I'm learning on how to, you know, build the color and you can, you know, the more you work on this and the more you create, and you can see that, um, you know, I was filling in, I kind of thought that was the rule and I giggled because I'm a real rule follower. So I was filling in every single part that I could. Um, but you know, you could come back in and like, you know, build your color. And I think the level that the grade level that you're working with is going to change the whole piece of art as well. Cause what grade level was this that you did it with? Was it fifth graders? Um, good question. Um, I think it was fifth graders, I believe, if, if I remember correctly. It's been a few years, but I, I believe it was fifth graders. It was an older. But you're right. You can, you can take almost any, any lesson plan, go up or go down with it. You really can. And yeah. by what you expect out of the students, by what you project for them and... Yeah. Um, one of the questions um, from Betty says, can you see the short videos you mentioned that another teacher made um, colored pencil techniques? Yes, and they are on our NASCO Education YouTube channel. And so you can go on there. I struggle because I am not of the technology age. But subscribe because then I think it pops up like in your feed and things like that, and it's easier to find. And so um, if you subscribe, when new things are added, you're going to get notice of those. Um, it just makes it easier for you to find, but just do NASCO education. Um, and then you could type in colored pencil techniques. And Angie Zabo is the high school art teacher. She also has a YouTube channel. Um, and we just put some of the links right in the chat. It's nice when you have somebody behind the scenes helping you. And so, um, yeah, so copy those um, links. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for joining us in California today. Um, especially because in Wisconsin, it snowed on us and <laughs> it's really cold too. I it always is. want one or I always want one or the other. It's okay if it snows, it just should be really cold and that's okay if it's really cold, but don't snow too. Um, so one thing that I will say is because of the level of detail, I think that Noel, you shared that sometimes there's frustration with students and that you really work with them in terms of sticking with it. And like you said, craftsmanship and quality. Um, you talk about it in the lesson plan to, you know, tell them that you're going to grade them on the quality, which is part of the reason that you allow them to use templates so that they have uniform quality. Uh, but you said that sometimes kids got discouraged, but you really pushed them because that would help um, tell Talk a little bit about that. Well, you always have the jackrabbits and the hares. So my, <laughs> my is that, and, and I know for a lot of art teachers, that can be very frustrating because you, 
you want them all to kind of stay on task. Well, you always get the ones that are just like done in five. So my thing is they would come up to me and they would say, okay. I said, well, see this little spot over here. How could we make this better? How could we get this better? And sometimes they would get a little frustrated with me, but here's what I found out. Never put your expectations low. If you put your expectations low, that's as low as they're going to go. You put your expectations high, they will try to hit your expectations. And you, you keep asking for more. So they would come back, well, try this little corner. Or how could we make this better? Or how could we make that better? And believe it or not, when you get all done, even though that sometimes maybe they were frustrated with me, when they got all done and they could see the finished product and go, wow, mine's as good as everyone else's, they start to realize to get where they got to go, they have to work hard. So I basically, even when I worked middle school, kind of graded on four things. First, I graded on their idea. Did they follow through on what they were supposed to, the idea, what I presented, the idea, okay. Two, how was their effort? So effort's always a part. You know, if they, they sit there and they're not working, that's not effort. So that's a part of the grade. Did they um, understand always when I gave the directions, did they understand what, um, what I was asking? Did, did they do an organic or geometric shape? Did they follow through on the lines? Did they have the negative positive space? Did they have the... Um, uh, all, all the parts that I asked for in the lesson plan. So it was, let's see, and then I'm missing one thing here. Oh, um, and then the final would be their product, how, how their product. So product is the, pro, is the final. So, so for some, some students work really, really hard. And this kind of balances out for me because for some students, they work hard, but they don't always have the technical skills. And so that's something that they have to develop. It's just like reading. All children don't read at the same time. Same with art. All children do not do art at the same time in the same way, which makes it beautiful because everything in the end is really their product. It is a product of who they are. That's what I love about art. There's never two pieces that are ever the same. Oh, it was stunning to see that you did a, such a great job always displaying too. And it was just stunning to see these pieces. And like I said, I mean, there were so many times that I'd be like, do you work with middle school on this? Because middle school and the um, elementary school um, were close by. And I knew that you were friends with the art teacher at the middle school. So sometimes I'm like, do you collaborate? And you're like, no, these are ours. Um, how, how often did you demonstrate like technique and things like that? Um, usually I would, um, demonstrate what I was looking for and what the guidelines were at the beginning. And then I could, if, if things weren't, because I think a good teacher is a reflective teacher. A good teacher is somebody that constantly is reflecting on what they're doing. If this is not working, you have to stop. And you have to reassess how to get it to work. So maybe another day they would be working. And I'm seeing, oh, this is happening. They're leaving too many gaps or they're starting all over the place. Sometimes it's easier to continue than to start all over the place. But for some people, that's how their mind works. So then I might have to say, okay, how are you going to connect all these areas that you started working in so that it works as a whole? Because a lot of students will hop around like that. So I think you have to kind of every day reassess. Take a look as you're walking around, as you're walking around and looking at the progress they're making, um, you constantly reflect. And when it's time and you see, ah, some people are going off over here, then you have to go back and, and stop them and go, okay, and not point them out, just stop them and go, okay, how are we going to connect these things? Or how are we going to... Um, fix this problem. I'm seeing this or I'm seeing that. And, and that usually works because it's, a, they have to reflect just like you have to reflect. Absolutely. Did you have the students practice the shapes, patterns, colors before the lesson plan? Uh, you could. Um, a lot of times 
by fifth grade, they would have already had this all through kindergarten, first, second, third, because basically I would talk about those every year, pretty much in projects. So by fifth grade, they would have that down. If you're talking about kindergarten or elementary, then you have to start at the basics. So it, again, it reflects where you're going to do the project. So I would say probably for my fifth graders, when I did this, we probably reviewed what the lines were in case they forgot, put some of them on the board, reviewed shapes, put those on the board, but then they should have been able to kind of go on. If you're talking about working with kindergartners and, and working it downwards, then you would probably have to start from the basics. I hope that Another answered. Yes. Another question was, did you start with a pencil or did you dive in using the colored pencil? I can speak for um, myself. I don't, I don't. Right no, I, I <laughs> it's, again, it's a fifth grade level. I just have them dive in. Like I, I, I've made bookmarks. I've had bookmarks uh, like with kindergarten. Sometimes I've started with bookmarks with lines and then we talk about repetition and then when they're all done, I laminate them so they can have them. So that would be oh, like great idea. That would be an example of a kindergarten project where they're learning all the lines, but they're also learning repetition so that they're learning patterns. So, but by then, by the time they got to fifth grade, see, they could do stuff like this. So, yes. it's, okay. I hope that answers her question. Yes. Um, how about the pencil though? Did uh, I miss that? You dove right in. That's right. I did I miss it. Right. I, would, I would dive right in with the colored pencils by fifth grade. If you want to practice yes. a little bit yes. with, the, with the younger kids, you, you can do that. But by, I think by fifth grade, and there's going to be happy mistakes. That's what art is. It's happy mistakes. Well, so, yeah. Know. And I giggle because that is not completely true because I think on this one, I can see my, my pencil mark right here. So I think that was because I get nervous um, at anything that's geometric versus organic, because if it's swirly, swirly, I'm all into it. But I found myself on the piece that I did, I found myself nervous to do anything that wasn't geometric. But then as I started to need to fill some space, um, these are sort of like scallop edge. You can't see them really well there, but some scalloped edge. Um, and then I started to find myself doing a few little wigglies and stuff like that, just because I started feeling like you said, like a little bit like jackrabbit, like, I, okay, I need to get this finished. I, I you know, I got I got deadlines to do and stuff like that. I think there's also guilt that I have when I'm doing art for NASCO. Like I'm not really working. Like it is, it is part of my job, but somehow it's so much fun that I feel guilty. But samples, you know, samples, and I get it. Art teachers are really, they work really hard. I tip yes, my they hand do. All our teachers. It's probably one of the hardest jobs in a building. And but samples are really important, especially the older they get. So if you have a time to make a sample to kind of show them how it's going to work, that helps. But I understand totally that you do not always have time to make samples right. because I like are inundated. <laughs> oh, absolutely. More than ever. And I totally get it, too. But I will say that there is something you understand the project too so much better when you've used the materials, when you've followed the directions. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, because there's so much choice involved, you know, the way that a student might go about it in terms of, I think sometimes when we write the directions down, like I followed the directions but I know that sometimes when I'm reading somebody's lesson plan, time might be an issue or I'm like, oh, I can do this instead of that. There might be like, you know, it's like six and a half, six and a half dozen. There might be two ways to do it that work, but they're not necessarily the same. Okay. My, my Did that make any sense? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to answer, but if I don't, then you, you redirect me. But my 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 friend and I 
when we worked the middle school always had this saying kiss keep it simple sweetheart in other words keep because after about five or ten minutes the kids tune out they will tune you out so get your directions down if you have to next time they come in because it's a project that might go a couple times you can always reiterate but keep it simple keep it simple and let them have the exploration and find uh what works for them now did i answer your question i'm not no, sure that is yes no absolutely okay. um because yeah absolutely you did somebody also said that um they had geometric jelly plates what about like mixing printing the shapes then adding the line design i mean sure you you can create all kinds of things i would make um with my kindergarten here's another thing i did with kindergartners i would make a i would take my uh board one of the boards in the hallway by one of the kindergarten rooms or by my room and i take a large piece of brown paper um and we would do line mural we do a line mural that would we could put up and every student would be put a line to the mural so once again I think when we did that, we, we did a combination of paint and pencils and markers. So glitter where you just keep adding, adding, adding different lines. So you can basically, basically change anything up. What I'm saying is take the idea of a line. And now how many ideas did I already give you? I gave you bookmarks. I gave you a mural. I gave you I, parts of this. So yeah. in other words, you just keep spinning off on on things and um and you can combo any materials i love mixed media i just love mixed media because mm, it's just more too. things for them to learn it's just more things for them to feel and touch and experience you want them to experience all the different types of media today it's pencils and 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 nature tomorrow it's going to be paint and pencils the next day it might be ink and so you can just keep going and going and going i think those ideas to um i think those ideas too in terms of trying something try the the gel plates and um see how it turns out it might be so fantastic that you like you don't go back to the other way of doing it somebody says uh you use glitter at the elementary level god bless you you must be you must be like the glitter fairy oh my gosh um i will tell you there's ways to do glitter here's how you do glitter you have one table where they come to glitter you don't glitter all over so there's ways to go about that too but um yeah, I did use glitter. We would make tooth fairies. And of course, if you're making a tooth fairy, you got to have some glitter, don't you? So right. I, mean, I get it. Glitter, glitter takes a long time, but you can kind of control that by having one table. When they get ready and they're done, they glitter at that one table instead of all over the room. But um, I was thinking, you know, you can take in, I've taken uh, when you finished rolls of tape, I've saved the insides of the tape rolls for like transparent tape. They're beautiful. They can be used as stencils. Um, laundry tops can be used at, on, uh, as stencils. You can find a lot of things that you as a person throw out that you can use as stencils. So you, you buy the things you can afford and then you add in your own. I would have boxes and boxes of things I use for printing. And they were mostly free because they get dirty and, and full of paint. And sometimes you want to clean them and sometimes you don't have time. So you throw them out and you collect new. So, you know, just it's interesting that you, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that you say that, well, first of all, um, you know, you make me giggle because you, you use so much and you just knew how to, you know, figure it out, but also, Noel, I used to use you as an example a lot whenever I would talk with um, people about it, teachers in the public school system about donors choose, because yep. you had shared with me that you had tried donors choose, I think for the first time, and actually got a potter's wheel. And then 
after that, you did maybe like a hundred dollar projects and you said that they would get funded pretty swiftly. After. Yep. I did. I, I got soap uh, screen print free from Land's End uh, screen printing, whole setup for screen printing. I got uh, videos through um, like getting to know the famous artists through Mike Venezia. Uh, I got a whole series of that. I did get a potter's wheel um, put in for grants. You wouldn't believe the things you can get. I, I was funded. Um, oh, well, they only gave How'd you to learn how to write the grants. Uh, well, you just, I don't know. I just, if I saw something I could feel that I could do quickly, then I, I would just apply for it. Like I got a, a, a nice digital uh, camera that uh, would, you know, you could use with your computers. They only funded five, 50 in the whole United States. And I, at that time, I was one of the ones to get them. And basically it was just a very simple fill it out. And at that point I was teaching art in the basement. And I think maybe they felt a little, a little sorry for me. But it, <laughs> and um, I was so excited to get this. I, I put in for another, I'm trying to think of what the name of it was. I got all these free prints that came from, um, I don't remember what it was called. Peep, um, oh boy, <laughs> senior moment. But anyways, That's it was okay. funded uh, through a grant and I got all these beautiful prints that came free. So you'd be surprised what's out there. And I know it takes time, but whatever I could do to build my program, that I was all in because I wanted everything that, and I used to travel to four schools at one point. I wanted everything that, that the big schools had in my little schools of 75. So right. I had to work for it. And you can ask your district for things, believe it or not. As my program got stronger, they funded me all new tables. Anything I wanted, they would, they would fund for me. If you, if you have a strong program and it's highly respected, you will be surprised what, what they will, you know, what they'll fund for you. People to people was the art prints. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think that's what it was. Yep. I was thank thinking, you, Carla. Yeah. Thank and, Virgi you. and Virginia said she uses um, glitter mixed with clear glue or glitter glue sticks to keep the, sure. um, you know, you that, that definitely works too. It does. Um, I like what you said in regards to, um, you know, building your art program. And so like when I would go into your school, you displayed the art and that's, that's how I, this isn't the only lesson plan that um, Noel has worked with NASCO on. Um, another one was um, Native American pouches, which was a, a really cool ceramic like, those were pouch. Really, those were really um, clay sole pins was another clay one that we did, a Georgia O'Keeffe pin. Um, our, our lesson plans are on NASCO education, um, and you can download them there. But do you think displaying the art is is one of the ways that you showed, you yes. know, how you built your program. Yeah, it's, I, I will tell you, it is a lot of work being an art teacher because after yes. they leave your classroom, you are never done because if you really, the more you display the artwork and the more the children can see the artwork and the parents can see the artwork, um, the, you need to make yourself present. Like, when I did my art shows, I did, did do something I thought was really kind of quite creative. Um, I mm -hmm. took and I had each kid, student maybe had four to five pieces of artwork, but I bought ribbons, a first place ribbons, and I let each kid get a ribbon the night of the art show. And they would be able to place that ribbon on the piece that they felt was their best piece for the year. Oh, My art shows were very, very well attended. Almost all the kids, most of the kids came with their parents. They were so proud to run around, figure out which piece they were going to put their ribbon on. And 
it was, it went on. I did that for, for many years and that was really, really neat um, because they were so proud to put that. It was like them awarding themselves a first place ribbon. And how many kids always get a first place ribbon? Not oh, many. Yeah. Not many. It, this way, exactly. everyone got a first place ribbon. Everyone. I love that. And allowing them to choose the one that they felt was the best because not not everybody likes not everybody likes our own your own art you know what i mean like something i think is really really cool um i remember somebody here at the ASCO said "Ah, oh, not your best work <laughs> well that's art is opinion you know it's all opinion yeah. so and well, i giggled though because i thought mm, it actually is my best work and i love it yeah but you know i just the more you can you can make and the more you can have parents come in and and appreciate what what you've done and it, it's not what i've done what the kids have done but to it's interactive you need interactive yeah. if you want people to appreciate how hard you're working because you are and the kids are working yeah. you've got to have interaction and the only way to do that is there's gimmicks and the gimmicks work i found through the years and you know, you just learn as you go. You learn as you go. Things that True. work, he said, don't. And then you just keep trying to build your program. And that was always my goal because I wanted the kids to be proud of what they did. I wanted the kids. And, you know, I can go, sometimes I go downtown and all of a sudden I bump into someone I've had and they go, Mrs. Burns. And I, sometimes I'm a little embarrassed because I've had probably how many thousands of students <laughs> but it's and I don't always remember names and by the time they're in first grade and they're now in high school in a job they're they right. change. you know Mrs. Burns because of you I know I have my own business now I I paint I had a student stop me I paint these statues I I build these I I I, I paint all these soldiers and I sell them and because of you I know about color because you know art is life art is life and if you teach them life you, you want to plant a garden, you have to know about color. You have to know about, you want to paint a room. I always told my kids, you want to paint a room, you better know a little bit about color because you paint it too dark, you're going to close in that room. You paint it too light, you know, they need to know all these things. It's yeah. not, it's not like it's not practical. Art is, if you don't have art, you're sitting on a pile of dirt naked. So art is everywhere. <laughs> it's everything you do, it's in your clothes, it's in your shoes. It's, it's in your house. It's art. And people yes. don't always think about that, but it is. Art is everywhere. It's a powerful love that. three letter word. It's a powerful Cal three letter word. I'll repeat yes. that. <laughs> I think it is totally worth repeating. And um, you are getting all kinds of wow, true. Um, I love that um, analogy. I also, um, somebody asked where you got the blue ribbons. I don't know if you got them from NASCO, but I know the NASCO PE often has ribbons in it. Um, our agriculture catalog, I believe, had some ribbons in it. So you, st you still might be able to get them from NASCO, but um, even another party idea. stores have yep. them. And I Another idea, somebody had places. donated somebody had donated ribbons in wood. And so I had the kids uh, and they were free. So I took, <laughs> I had the kids design their own ribbons to put on their pictures. So there's another mm. thing you can do besides getting the blue ribbon. When the, when I had the issue of the, of the wooden, they, I just had the kids design their own. So there's lots of ways to do this. They can design their own award that they put on. If you can't afford the ribbons, if you can afford the ribbons, it's a lot easier, but you know, it's another, yes, just use your imagination. You can go on forever. Oh, absolutely. And you are so good at it. I, one question about the actual lesson plan, were they allowed to make organic shapes within the actual design oh, on it? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, they, now yeah. you tell me, no. <laughs> well, I'm teasing. Are, but that's okay. Cause you're just creating You're you're discovering for yourself 
your own creativity. There is no art. There is no right or wrong answer. It's the answer. No, you, you are right. It's the answer you make and you design and you create in your bread. It's, it's in your head. It's your idea. It's your idea, not theirs, you know? So I, um, you're yes, a good student, I, see? Well, I have 90,000 amazing teachers out there who keep showing me stuff. And I have been absolutely blessed to have you um, cross my path early on. And um, we only have a few minutes left, but I'm still going to tell the story. So the Wisconsin Art Ed was at in Madison, Wisconsin, and it happened to be the year that John Kerry was running for president. And Bruce Springsteen was a big fan and was trying to certainly help him. So Bruce Springsteen kept showing up along the way on his campaign trail and he'd play a tune. Well, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to see the boss, right? Yeah, that was the same weekend as Wisconsin Art Education Association. And so all these art teachers are flocking to the Capitol real quick to see Bruce Springsteen as the vendors are in the area, um, you know, exhibit hall. And Noel and another art teacher popped in and um, we had the most delightful conversation and um, a great partnership with some lesson plans. And now I call her my friend and I'm super grateful. Noel, thank you so much for being here and thank you for oodles of information that was beyond even what I anticipated we would talk about. We have more lesson plan or we have more lesson plans on our website, but we have more Maker Mondays coming up in February and March. Um, February is going to um, feature Heather McCutcheon with some social and emotional learning stuff. It's going to be so good. And then in March, we are going to talk about um, choice-based and um, teacher-directed art, um, freedom and constraint with Mary Heffler. So um, keep looking for um, the emails to sign up. Um, if you want to make sure you're on our email list, um, feel free to email me. I would love to, if you don't know me and we haven't met, I would love to get to know you. For all of those of you who are joining that I do know, I miss your faces and I want to see you again. And it, I can hear, I can hear um, my voice in my ear. Um, <laughs> I could hear my own voice in my ear. I thought Andy was telling me to wrap it up. But I should wrap it up. And so um, if I don't know you, um, please send me an email. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, any of your challenges. I am the voice of the customer here at NASCO. So what you tell me always gets um, all the way up to the top. And I just hope that you're staying safe and staying well. And I hope that you are um, continuing to inspire your students. Thank you so, so much. Noel, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you to all the wonderful people who responded. Um, it's been a fun, fast hour. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again soon. And good right. luck. Keep, 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 keep going. Yeah, keep teaching art, everybody. There you go. Bye-bye.